and welcome to Carmel's Kitchen. Today we're going to make a harvest fruit loaf. So you can make a harvest fruit loaf in a two pound tin or you can make with the recipe that we're using today or you can make two smaller cakes if you'd like to share. Okay so the first thing you need to do is turn on your oven to 175 degrees centigrade or gas mark three. The next thing we have to do is line our tin. So we have a two pound loaf tin and we're going to line it with some baking parchment. So if you just have the paper so that it's bigger than your tin and line it up on the tin so that you're, it's roughly even around both of the longest sides. Cut in roughly two inches on both ends of your paper. Because your idea is that your cake will sit down into your tin. The paper is going to sit down into your tin and you will be just able to put your mixture in on top of that. And in it goes. So there's our tin lined and ready for us when we are ready. Okay, so we'll just move that to the side for a few seconds because we don't need it right at the moment. Then we have a clean, dry mixing bowl. Into our mixing bowl, we're going to put 110 grams of soft margarine or soft butter. Mine has been out of the fridge for a little while. So we're going to beat that until it's nice and soft. Into that, then I'm going to add 100 grams of light brown sugar. You can use dark brown sugar if you like a dark cake, or you can use caster sugar. All depends on what you like in the end. Okay, so cream that together until it comes together nice and fluffy. Um, you shouldn't hear the sugar anymore. It shouldn't be like sand grating in the end of your bowl. So cream it up until it's nice and light. Okay, I like to use a nice um, flexi light wooden spoon because I just think the other wooden spoons are kind of heavy and sometimes you might be after using them in the frying pan for maybe helping you with the frying of onions. Okay, into this now I'm going to add two eggs. So I have my jug, my measuring jug, and I'm going to break one egg in there. Okay, then I'm going to add that into my mixture and bring it back, cream it back together again. You can do this with an electric mixer, but if I was using an electric mixer now, I think the noise would be just a little bit too much. Okay, into our mixture today, we're going to add sultanas, a mixture of sultanas and raisins, and some glass of cherries. If you don't like, the fruit option, you can always add in just some nuts, if you prefer nuts. Then it won't be a harvest fruit loaf, it'll be a nut fruit loaf. Okay, so I'm going to add into this now just a little bit of my flour. So I have, in my flour I have 225 grams and you just need plain flour for this cake. So we'll just add a little bit of that. Sieve it in. And then fold it back together again. Okay. Always remember to turn on your oven before you start so that your oven comes up to temperature. Okay. Now I've got 280 grams of dried fruit. We'll just put that in here. And if you like both raisins and sultanas, use a mixture. If you just prefer the sultanas on their own, just use the sultanas. It's up to you. It's 
going to be your cake at the end of the day. Okay, into this now I'm going to add 50 grams of chopped up cherries. If you want to count the cherries, if you don't feel like weighing them, it's seven cherries. And at this stage, if you wanted, you could add maybe some um, chopped almonds or hazelnuts, whatever you'd like yourself. Now we just add the rest of the flour. So that's 110 grams of soft margarine or butter, 100 grams of brown sugar, two eggs, 280 grams of plain flour, sorry, 225 grams of plain flour and 280 grams of dried fruit. Okay, as you can see, my mixture is a little stiff, so I'm going to have to add some milk. So I've got my jug and I'm going to add four dessert spoons of milk. into your mixture. Right, just stir that up. Lovely with a cup of tea, a slice of cake. So you can see it's a dropping consistency. Well, I think I might just add one more spoon of milk into it, or maybe two. So that's six spoons of milk I have added today. Okay, that's better. It'll drop that bit better this time. There we go. Okay, so my tin is prepared and I have a spatula. So in that will go into my tin. Just be careful that your paper doesn't fall down. You don't need to grease the paper because it's parchment baking paper. If you were just using grease free paper, um, well then, yes, then you would certainly want to grease it because you don't want your paper stuck to your cake. Let me just take that out. Put that to the side. Okay, scrape it in. And in it goes. Into my tin. It takes about roughly about an hour and 15 minutes to cook when you take it out of the oven allow it to cool in the tin before you take it out before you put it sit it on a wire tray to cool when it's cool don't remove the baking paper just wrap it up and put it in your cupboard for the next day. Okay, it should it will hold for a good few days in your oven. So into my oven at 175 degrees and my light has gone out. I'll be back in one sec. If you made your cake in the two tins, you'll just end up with two little, lovely little fellas like this. So 
So this one I didn't scatter any nuts on the top. You can see it. Okay, and this one I scattered a couple of almonds on the top. Okay, so now I'll just cut this and show you what it looks like on the inside. So there you are, harvest fruit loaf. Bon appétit and enjoy.